Is there any other specific questions? Um, I just want to talk for just a quick second about heat or cold because I've treated a, a medical doctor who came in and he had an acute uh, strain in his neck. And, um, and I said, I'm not going to tell you anything because you're a doctor and, and they obviously know a lot more about uh, some of these type of things than massage therapists. Uh, we have a, we're like, we're not subject to having a, a graduate degree, so we're not university students that take a postgrad in, in uh, massage therapy. We're just out of high school and go. That's the prerequisite. It's, it is an extensive uh, two or three year program. Um, however, I'm not going to tell a doctor what to do, but I just wanted to challenge this common sense because a lot of doctors says, "Well, use heat or cold, whatever makes you feel better." But there are very specific physiological effects for either, and should be what should be um, respected when they're used. If you have stiffness, achiness, if you have immobility not due to pain, if you have uh, muscles that are too short and you want to increase the range of motion, again, stiffness, achiness, that's a good indication for heat. Moist heat, later we'll talk about moist cold, but the moisture, because most of our body is, is water and moisture, it is an energy conductor and allows the heat or cold to go in deeper, faster, and more effectively. So, Heat helps to, when you take heat off, it's red. Therefore, um, it's brought more blood, more fluid to the area, and it's heated to play the, the tissues up so they're more pliable, more flexible. A great time to stretch is after you apply heat. And if it's part of your, your, uh, your treatment goal is to increase your range of motion, use heat for a period of 10 to 15 minutes or so before a moist heat, then do your stretching. You can do your exercise, which would be on the opposite side, to strengthen up the side, the opposite to the shortened side. And then you can use some cold afterwards if you find you're going to experience some, uh, some discomfort or pain because of the exercise you've done. <clears throat> cold, on the other hand, is an anti-inflammatory. When you take cold off, you'll see that it's white or it's kind of like white and uh, pinky kind of thing because it's been, uh, fluid has been pushed out of the area. It's a decrease in blood flow. Therefore, it works as an anti-inflammatory. And if you have an inflamed condition, so now we're talking about any of the signs and symptoms of, of uh, inflammation, which is your pain, redness, immobilization, swelling, and heat, which you will see in, in any chronic, or sorry, in any acute um, ankle sprain, strain, um, anything from accidents, injuries, bruising, those are all acute signs and symptoms of uh, pain, redness, immobilization, swelling, and heat, and good indications for using cold therapies. Again, moist cold. Pushes fluid out of the area, therefore, um, with less fluid, with less pressure, when you move, there'll be less pain, and helps to prolong or sort of promote the healing process. So, just in general, like I said, if you have if you have stiff and achy, use heat. If you have pain and immobility due to pain or swelling, use cold. And then you can also go in between and use a little bit of both, where you use heat to warm up, heat to get things moving, heat to start stretching. Um, you can also use active heat, whether you go for a walk, um, whether you do some jogging. Anytime you're hot, anytime you're sweating, this is a great time to do some stretching. You will never harm yourself by stretching at a pain level 6 or 7 out of 10. Um, and that's another thing I guess I should talk about briefly. Sometimes people still talk about going massage and sometimes it hurts. I'm not a huge fan of the no pain, no gain theory. A pain level of 0, no pain, 10 being maximum pain. 8, 9, and 10, in my opinion, is sympathetically charging. It's, it's hard for your body to accept. And I think it's degenerating or it's, 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 it's not constructive. Something that's relaxing, but you can, might have worked, they talk about working through it. Pain level 5, 6, 7, in around that range is something you can tolerate and something that you can feel good about what you're doing and shouldn't cause any negative effects afterwards. And that's how you should feel in a massage. Sometimes it can be a little uncomfortable at a pain level 7, maybe an 8. But you don't want to be at that 9, 10 for sure. And, um, you know, as massage therapists, we would then work our way in, just like you would with heat, then with stretching. We're going to make some of the physical changes. And then after you're done, because of what we've done, or because of what you've done on yourself, if you have an, an, an injury or an issue you're dealing with, we use cold then afterwards to use that as an anti-inflammatory to promote that blood flow and the anti-inflammatory process to continuously help that healing process. I think that's pretty much everything that I had for you, but I don't have a demonstration. Massage therapy is best uh, demonstrated one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, I do often set up at different health fairs. I uh, wasn't really set up to do that today, and I didn't want to take away from some of the presenters that were here. But um, I would invite you to come and see me in my office for a demonstration, or find any massage therapist. But consider putting a massage therapist on your health care team, because, again, you really can look, feel, and be better. I thank you very much.